Today, it is the right time to talk about a sensitive subject for the Chinese Communist Party, or more accurately, a taboo subject for the notorious CCP, the Tiananmen Square Massacre. Known amongst the Chinese as June 4th Incident, also known as the 89th Democracy Movement. It is going to be a very heavy topic. If you want to know more about this incident, keep watching. Welcome to Beyond the News, I'm Fei. The protests were initiated by mostly college students at the Tiananmen Square in Beijing starting from April 15, 1989. The igniting point of the movement was the death of the pro-reform communist general secretary Hu Yaobang in April 1989 amid the backdrop of rapid economic development and social change in the post-Mao China reflecting anxieties among the people about the country's future. Students were simply asking for more freedom for the public and political reform in the government. Their calls were answered in the early hours of June 4, 1989, with a bloody military crackdown that crushed the movement. The massacre at Tiananmen killed at least 10,000 people, according to the BBC. China bans all activists' commemorations and highly regulates online discussion on this incident, including censoring criticism, as usual, but it is marked annually by activists elsewhere in the world, particularly in Hong Kong and Taiwan and overseas Chinese groups who aren't tainted by the CCP. While the Taiwanese people are still commemorating the June 4 massacre as usual this year, Things in Hong Kong change a lot, as we all know. Starting from last year with the so-called Hong Kong National Security Law in place from June 2020, the CCP has basically turned Hong Kong into one of its usual provinces. And starting from last year, Hong Kong's annual Tiananmen candlelight vigil that usually held in Victoria Park banged for the first time in 30 years. The CCP has always treated the Tiananmen massacre as one of the most sensitive or taboo topics, simply because they were at fault completely. All those students peacefully protesting was for a bit of democracy and anti-corruption. Sounds pretty reasonable, right? But note the Chinese communist regime did not like the idea at all. In fact, after they killed all those innocent students, they turned the story around and made up a propaganda on how violently those unarmed students attacked the heavy armed soldiers and tanks. Since you know every Chinese person knows Kung Fu, can split a tank in half with their bare hands. They have killed at least 10,000 students and still trying to make up that crap, expecting people to believe them. Even if people were not fooled by the propaganda, it is another CCP's way of doing things. It is called kill the chicken to scare the monkey. So that no one else is there enough in asking for freedom or humanizing China ever again. And that's why the CCP tried everything to suppress anyone or any form of commemorating the June 4th Tiananmen massacre event. However, not all Chinese were the scared monkeys. Some of them are very brave indeed. Some of the Chinese still trying their best to do the commemoration of this June 4th massacre one way or another. On the evening of May 31st, 2020, Chen Yufei, a human rights defender from Sichuan, China and a 1989 student movement participant, attended the online 31st anniversary of the June 4th commemorative meeting and gave a speech. Chen Yufei was then quickly taken away by the local police and lost contact. Dong Shengkun, one of the representatives of Beijing citizens on June 4th, was also arrested during this online commemorative event, as usual. The CCP's way is to make sure that you will get lost. If you ever dare enough to go against its will and brave enough to talk about the June 4th killing. A few days back, the Tiananmen Mothers Group, which founded by the families of the June 4th massacre victims, published a memorial on their official website, tiananmenmother.org, stating that this year is the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Communist Party of China. If the CCP is to govern the country according to law, respect the people's dominant position, and ensure that people are the master of the country, 
as this is the favorite propaganda that CCP has always used to promote themselves. Then the government must first start with the resolution of the June 4th massacre. The sacrificial text wrote, how many people were killed and injured in this tragedy? It has been 32 years and the government has not mentioned a word. All citizens have no right to know about this tragedy, nor can they publicly commemorate and hold the ruling party, the Communist China, responsible for the massacre, because the government has no sense of justice and use silent contempt. It deprives each Chinese individual of the right to survive. This year, the brave Hongkies people from the Hong Kong Alliance of Stakes applied to the police for the June 4th commemorative event again, but it was rejected just like last year. With a little bit more pressure this year, police have warned people who were attempting to attend the event may face five years charge in jail. But the Stake Association reopened the June 4th Memorial Hall on the afternoon of May 30 and held flower offering and candlelight morning activities on the spot. The Stake Standing Committee member Lu Wei Ming said that this exhibition should not create any legal risks, he said, unless it comes to clarifying the truth, history and facts are illegal in Hong Kong now. He hopes to be able to show the truth of the June 4th event and its true history so that Chinese people are able to pass on historical facts of the massacre. Mai Ha Hua, also a committee member, said that because the Hong Kong government restricted the gathering of people on the grounds of the epidemic, it was also impossible to hold the June 4th commemorative visual in Victoria Park this year. So they're trying to encourage Hong Kong people to come visit the exhibition. But as of today, the June 4th Memorial Hall was to be temporarily closed. The Stake Standing Committee announced on the 2nd of June that in order to ensure the safety of staff and visitors, it was temporarily closed. I think that you could imagine the pressure they are facing and the dirty games the CCP is playing to make sure that the exhibition will not happen whatsoever. Well, nothing surprised me anymore. It is the nature of the CCP that such memorial hall cannot be put to display in Hong Kong like business as usual. As this little piece of land is now under the CCP's iron claws tightly gripping. But can the CCP wipe clean the bloody history of the June 4th massacre? Even if they can do so in China temporarily, even if they can do so in Hong Kong temporarily, they cannot control people from around the world to commemorate this massacre. So those of us who are with a free environment should tell people more about this tragedy. What CCP has done should not be forgotten. Well, this is why I made this episode. If you agree with me, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. It is a heavy topic today, so I hope this won't bring you much sadness. It is more important that we don't become numb seeing all those CCP's crimes. The tragic stories created and still creating by the CCP in China covers far beyond the June 4th massacre, far beyond genocide of Uyghurs in China, far beyond the killings of Tibetans, far beyond what we can imagine in fact. So let's keep talking about this so that we won't forget it. Thank you for your time. I'm Faye from Beyond the News. Until next time.